Welcome back to the Hollow Sky Podcast. We're your hosts, Steven. And Kyle. And today we are diving back into the Hollow Phone. We got a bunch of submissions and text messages we are going to read and share with you all because that's what it's here for. So before we do that, we're going to get through the business. Check us out at all our social medias, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok. Come and hang out with us. Do your thing. You know how, you know the deal. If you have a listener submission you'd like to send to us for us to feature on a future show, Kyle's going to tell you how to do it. It's mostly in the show notes. You got the hollow phone, which, you know, we're getting ready to do the episode on. Uh, you can use your voice memo app on your phones, record yourself, shoot it over to the email, hollowskypodcast at gmail.com. You can write your stories out. You can text the phone. You can pretty much do whatever you want. There's social medias. You can reach out as well. Discord, blah, blah, blah. You guys know. You already know. You already know. Um, if you'd like to support the show, there's tons of ways you can do it. First and foremost, tell all your weird friends, all your podcast listener friends, all your strange friends. Word of mouth, get us out there. It is the best thing you can do. We also have a Patreon. If you like us that much and you want to listen to us more, you can sign up for a tier there. We have a Venmo. You can shoot us some monster money. That's always dope. Or you can leave us a five-star rating and review, which we will gladly shout out on a future episode. I'm scrolling through a whole bunch here trying to figure out where we left off. So bear with me. Hmm. God damn, there's so many of them. Which is a good problem to have. It is. <clears throat> Um, I think we're right here. Good enough. Yeah. Good enough. It says, uh, this is from Pritchett Art. Outstanding podcast. Definitely loving this podcast. Came from the confessionals. You guys rock my type of podcast. I'm hooked. Well, Pritchett Art, you rock. Word. Thanks for taking the time to shout us out. We do appreciate it. Love it. Love it. With that being said, we are going to dive right into all the goodness on this hollow phone. So we're not doing a listener submission of the day because we're going to have a ton of them. So it's going to be sick and fly. So I'm going to go ahead and start this out with a text message that we received. Let's go. From our buddy Walt. And he says, it's, he titles it Flashing Grid in the Sky. He says, I'm Walter from New Jersey. Back in fall of 98, me and a friend were at Leonardo Beach. It's the southern end of Reation Bay. So standing on that beach at night, you get a perfect view of Manhattan. Also, there is a naval pier that is nearby. We were standing on the beach, hanging out, smoking cigarettes. It was a fall night around 7, 8 o'clock. No drugs, no alcohol. All of a sudden, this grid in the overcast night sky appears. I mean huge, like a giant checkerboard, flashing. The way I describe it is a disco floor like Saturday Night Fever. It was gigantic. It was the color of lightning. The squares were turning on and off at random. The edges were frighteningly perfect. When it stopped, me and my friend looked at each other and were in total shock. And he has a couple, another story that he was uh, wanting to talk about was that there was a floating circle that was totally flat and another experience was that he witnessed dripping molten metal in the sky. That is wild. Yeah, so I texted him, and he, he never did end up texting back with those two stories, but I don't know. The grid one alone is is absolutely bizarre, like watching a grid pop up in the night sky. Yeah, and at first I'm like, well, maybe it's – Maybe it's drones or something weird like that. Maybe it's some sort of blue beam technology, but you just Google grids in the sky and tons of Reddit stories come up about people seeing it. Really? Yeah. Yep. 
That's crazy. Here's one about six years ago. I remember seeing something in the sky. It was one of the most interesting things I've ever seen, as well as one of the most beautiful and perfect things I've ever seen. Six years is a long time to remember, so something or remember something. So I wrote down the facts on a notepad a few days after it happened. September 2012, I was playing Modern Warfare 3 with my friends, uh, playing Search and Destroy. It was around 11 at night, and I remember my mother telling me, quick, come here, you have to see this. I wasn't really interested, but she kept insisting, so I took off my headphones mid-game and went to see what she was looking at. I saw something I can't explain and never will. It was nighttime, partially cloudy. It was this, or Its size was something of a proportion that I can't explain. It started from the very right side of the sky and was moving to the left. At least 50 individual dots, which formed a parallelogram, and it was a grid shaped. Each dot had a gap in it. The dots were flashing every color of the spectrum, each dot flashing colors over or every millisecond, almost like balls of gas or some sort. It took about 30 seconds to travel across one side of the sky to the other. Um, so I can uh, confirm uh, it was above the clouds because it went behind the clouds at the very left and disappeared. Something weird happened as well. I ran back to my room to get the phone to record it. I grabbed and took about three seconds to run to my room full speed to grab it, another three to run back. Uh, my mom was yelling, record it. I was looking at it and felt, and I felt something, and I lied and said that the batteries died. So essentially, like, something told them not to film it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's terrifying. Yeah. I would want to film it then. But again, like, it's not an individual occurrence. Which is weird. It makes it a little bit weirder <laughs> that more and more people have seen it. I've never really, outside of this text message, I've never really heard of anybody like seeing a grid pattern in the sky like that. Some of the comments, most interesting point to me is the feeling that you got to not record it. I've read similar stories about grids in the sky, but this is the first time I've heard of an uneasy feeling with it. That's wild. I don't know. It's it's weird. Which almost leads credence to like the simulation theory or or the or the sky's a hologram. Yeah. Yeah. Here's another another uh, comment. It says, Yeah, they don't like being recorded, or rather it's generally against the rules. Um, I think they show themselves to those who needs to see them to be reminded of their intergalactic family slash purpose, but I think it's supposed to be a very narrow exposure. I had once asked to see them, and they came as dancing lights and stayed for a while until I decided to record them, and that's when they disappeared. As far as your decision not to record, that's a result of a common way of telepathic communication that's based, or that is used by space people. I mean, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Bizarre, why nevertheless. Not? Why not? Yeah, why not? The only time I remember having seen grids was when I was on mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there's a common denominator there. Reddit, you're wild. Yeah. You're wild, Reddit. Uh, I got another text message here. Starts out, Steve and Kyle, I enjoy listening to the podcast. I experienced an event when I was approximately 13 years old, give or take a year. This event came back to me due to a memory recall. Anyhow, it started very early in the morning, and it was during the summertime. I woke instantly and stood up. Directly in front of me was a small white extraterrestrial being. Wait, I think we've already done this one. Did we? I think so. Well, circling back, um, another comment on the grid says, this has been seen by others around the world. It's considered a frequency fence that covers the planet. It's to it's used to keep the enslaved souls of this planet from escaping the simulation after their physical death. Damn. Say that again. This has been seen by others around the world. It is considered a frequency fence that covers the planet. It's used to keep the enslaved souls of this planet from escaping the simulation after physical death. Well, if that's not heavy. I hate when my soul's enslaved. Yeah. It, I don't know. That's that's actually really terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> that is really I just, terrifying. I... Well, I don't know. I'm just going to stop asking questions because the more I find out, the worse it is. Yeah, and we did talk about the alien story. Did we actually talk about it where the guy helped the alien out of the craft and needed to bury him and stuff? 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to double check because that was the one that I was on. Yeah. That was that was one of my favorites. And I just wanted to make sure. The dude essentially covered up an extraterrestrial DUI. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> essentially, <laughs> yes. He is guilty by association. All right. Well, I guess from here we can play a couple voicemails and see how things work out. So we'll go from recent. Hey, uh, my name's Jonah. I've emailed you guys before and called you guys. I don't know if you read the email, but my entire life has been filled with paranormal and UFOs and I lived, my stepmother was a, uh, a witch, she was a Wiccan witch, and, you know, I'm also into paganism and, you know, esoteric knowledge, but that's not the point. Um, I had to call you guys, I'm actually listening to you guys right now, I do Ubers all day long, so, you know, better to have a good podcast playing, and, but I live right near a, a military base that's not active, in quotations, it's, we all know it's underground. And I saw in the distance, flying away from it, a pill-shaped, like white pill-shaped object. Like not circular, like sub-pill-shaped object. And I'm like watching it, and I'm actually driving closer to the military base at this point. And uh, as I get closer to it, I see another one. And in, in the military base, there's like a flock of like over 100 birds, and they're flying in in the most unregular pattern I've ever seen. And it's weird because they have their own, like, internal compass. Um, so, yeah, uh, something to think about. If you guys want to get back to me and do an interview, if you want to ever hear more of, uh, you know, any of my stories, I have plenty. My whole life has been filled with them. So, yeah, that's that. Keep it up. All right, so I will actually start this out and say that you need to get a hold of us. I know this is from a little bit ago, this voicemail. It's from September 19th. Not too long. But, you know, like we, as people know, we like to, to pool these up to where we get a bunch of them and then we can do an episode with it. But it is ironic enough that because we don't and we don't listen to these prior to it either. So keep that in mind. But it is ironic, I was thinking the other day, how I would actually like to talk to a practicing witch. So it's kind of weird that I listen to this voicemail and I'm like, oh, well. Synchronicity. If that doesn't line up. Yeah, I would really enjoy to hear more about that aspect of things and really pick a practicing witch's brain on on a lot of the questions that I have regarding the subject. We've I've never got to sit down and talk to a practicing witch or Wiccan or or whatever, you know, whatever label you want to put onto it. But I would be definitely interested in in hearing those stories. And I, we have heard reports of quote unquote inactive military bases and then the, but everybody around the area knows that they're still essentially active, more or less. And it's not, it's not really a, that surprising that you were to see some type of crazy ass craft come out of them. Yeah. And it's, it's the Tic Tac essentially, you know? Yeah, 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 exactly. That's exactly what I thought of That's, when he said that. That was the first thing that popped into my head was it's the same, the same style of craft that the Tic Tac video was. Um, it is also wild that the birds were flying out of formation in a weird, odd way, which could lead credence to um, different magnetic energies being produced by the crafts that are throwing these birds yeah, a lot of whack. That's exactly what I was thinking. Something was messing with the electromagnetic things they got going on in their head, I guess. Yeah. And if, Jonah, if you pass by this place often, being an Uber driver and being out on the road all the time, I'm always safely keep your phone handy. If you can get some video footage of some of that shit going on there, that would be dope. That would be awesome. So call to arms. Yeah, safely, that would be awesome. Safely track the UFOs and videotape them for us. Yes. Yeah, so try to communicate with us again. 
and we can set up an interview or something like that to talk about this weird shit. Let's see what's next. Hey guys, it's Julie Bennell. I just heard you use my um, voicemail again. That was so kind of you. I'm Julie Bennell, the medium lady, I guess you could call me. Um, anyway, yeah, give me a call. I'd be more than happy to talk to you um, and kind of tell you my story and if if you want to know that and then um, give you info on being a medium and yeah, possibly helping that man. If, um, I don't know if this guy's comfortable with me contacting him because you guys have his number, the guy that thinks he's an empath and maybe his daughter, I could certainly help him. Um, I do readings over the phone. Um, occasionally I don't do this as a huge business or anything. It's just kind of people I know and I do readings for them and it kind of word of mouth. Um, so anyway, um, I'd love to talk to you guys and fill you in with what I know. Um, so you can give me a call back. All right. So that would be obviously a response to some of our questions we had prior. Um, yeah, once again, I'm not opposed to sitting down and learning more about uh, being a medium because I, I have no experience in it at all. Yeah, me either. And again, in another odd uh, synchronicity. Uh, I just, Jen, the gal that cuts my hair, my friend, uh, she was just talking to me when I was getting my hair cut yesterday. And she's like, have you come in contact with contact with any mediums? And I had completely forgotten about Julie's call. So Jen, when you listen to this, yes, we do have contacts that might be able to reach out to you and talk to you about what you need to talk about. Kind of give you some insight on it. So it kind of all played out. That's weird. Itself there. Isn't that weird? So we're kind of batting two for two right yeah. now. <laughs> we literally had that conversation yesterday and now it just kind of, it just <laughs> fell into place. That's so weird. It is weird. So <laughs> thank you for contacting yeah. us again. And you, you might have uh, some more people interested in um, figuring all this stuff out because I don't know. Wow. Just, that just caught me off guard. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was like me playing the first one about, I was, cause I was, it wasn't two days ago. I'm like, man, it actually be kind of interesting to sit down and pick <laughs> their brain. Just kind of see, you know, just ask questions that I, I'm unfamiliar with and just see how things work. I don't know why I had that thought, but I was contemplating it. And now, and then here we are. Yeah. She's, interesting. So that's exactly what she said. She's like, if you, do you have any like medium contacts? And I'm like, well, not right off hand. But, yeah, and it just it just fell into place. So. Well, and and then like to be fair, like I and it's no everybody know I don't even know why I'm about to apologize for like slow get backs and stuff like that. But like me and Steve run a very loose ship here, and we are not good at time management. No, and not only that, but or like podcasting, we we do it so irresponsibly that we just, we literally follow things that fall in our lap, right? Like we're, <laughs> we're not the dude who's like, we're not the guys that are like hyper-focused on this one subject. Like, just like with this this witch call, like I'm thinking about it and here it plops in our head or in our lap and we just run with it. We And we just kind of let the weird and everything kind of, Take us where it takes us, you know? And we, yeah, we don't schedule things good. We're, no, we're kind of fly by the seat of our pants. That's pretty dudes. much how we work, like legitimately. So far, so good. Well, and I just look at it as like I'm just allowing the weirdness to guide me down a path, you know, because sometimes I'll contemplate, like, what am I going to write about this week? And then somebody on Discord or I'll read an article that just goes, well, there's my subject. Yep. I haven't heard about this one yet. Now yeah. I'm going to look into it. I feel that. Yeah, it's just weird. It's just weird. All right. Looks like on deck next, I actually have them programmed in my phone, and it would be Ingrid from Texas. Hey, guys. My name is Ingrid, and I am from Texas. Uh, I live on the Gulf Coast, and... Um, <laughs> I'm in shock because uh, I got to get my bearings here to tell you all this. Uh, 
I work long hours at work. I might work seven twelves or I might work five twelves or five tens, whatever. Um, but I work long hours, so I listen to a lot of podcasts uh, to get me through the day. And I found y'all's podcast and love it so much. Um, and I've been wanting to call in because I do have a lot of interesting stories. Um, and if, I will call back and leave some of those. But what I'm so excited about right now when I'm calling you is because uh, I went back in to your archives earlier today because I listened to your new show. And I'm like, Ugh, I've listened to all my new podcasts. I don't have anything to listen to. I haven't went back and listened to Hollow Sky podcasts archives so i went back to who's watching 657 boulevard and um for some reason in my mind it's a synchronistic thing i don't know why but something about um i used to have an imaginary friend and something kept poking me like you need to tell them about his his name was pumpkin I don't know, I guess because it's Halloween, I'm thinking about pumpkin, but um, my mom actually told me that me and my imaginary friend pumpkin had a very dramatic breakup when I decided I was done with him. Got up on it, you know, had to push the chair up to the phone on the wall, so I'm kind of giving my age away. We had cords on the phone and was giving him the what for and was so done with him and broken up with him. But what's funny is because the next show that I listened to was the stick man one. Stick man. And the very first beginning of the show, the girl's talking about their imaginary friend. How weird is that? <laughs> I, mean, what, I mean, really, what what are the odds of that happening that... I listened to that show, I skipped to the stick man show, not having any idea about imaginary people or imaginary play friends. Uh, but I will tell you the reason why I broke up with Pumpkin, my imaginary friend, he used to get me into a lot of trouble. And I'm telling you, those fellas, they're real. I remember him being very vivid and very real and talking me into go, go put your long dress on your little Christmas dress, even though it's summertime, and hop on your bike with the bike chain and try to ride. <laughs> and he would tell me, you know, it's I'm not going to get your dress messed up. It's going to be fine. And then my dress would get caught in the stupid bike chain. It, it's just, it's amazing. Kind of crazy, real. I think it's just because when we're so young, we're kind of close to the veil still. I don't know. But those little buddies they're real and some of them are little tricksters so but I just thought that that was so funny that the very next story was about a little girl with an imaginary friend and I had all day for some reason I kept going hi sorry it's Ingrid again sorry we got cut off but I did have to like y'all were saying, it's a white noise thing. It's kind of weird. He wasn't that way. He seemed like a very physical person in my life until I finally got mad at him for always getting me in trouble. Because I re I'm like, y'all don't know me, but I was always a very um, good kid. I didn't want to get in trouble. I didn't want to get in trouble at all. But he seemed like some kind of little trickster and I do understand the white noise thing yes like them coming between the veils and things I I don't know what it was and to this day I haven't heard or seen from him when I broke up on pumpkin over the phone when my mom had to move that chair over to the wall so I could get on that phone and break up with him but he hasn't been back since but it is a very odd thing, and I just think it's such a synchronistic thing that um, that came on right after I was thinking, I need to tell these guys that. So, 
anyway, I thought it was kind of a neat thing. And thank you so much for everything you all do. I love the podcast so, so much. And, oh, yeah, this is a podcast from, like, 2019. Sorry. But, yeah, um, like I said, going back, digging back, and just needing something to listen to because I love your show. And it only comes out once a week. And I understand you all work. But we love the show. Thank you so much. All right. So where to where to start with this one? Um the, the synchronicity commonality just keeps rolling with today's show. It is, is weird. So it's it's kind of three for three with the phrase bizarre. synchronicity. Yeah, I don't understand it. Um yeah, it that the invisible friend has always terrified me and I've always been forever grateful that my kids to date haven't had an invisible friend. My mom tells me that I used to have one that lived in the television that I would talk to in the static. I uh, I can't remember its name. Maybe it was David or something like that. I probably talked about it before, but I don't remember it. But she sure as hell does. Well, yeah, that would be a terrifying experience to watch your kid have a conversation with static in the TV. In Everett, when he was little, he had an imaginary friend that he would talk about all the time, talk about all the way down to the color of our hair, and <clears throat> his name was Juker Bob. Shout That's out. That's a good one. <laughs> Shout out to Juker Bob. Juker Bob. But, um, I like it. Anyway, it got to the point to where Everett was telling me that Juker Bob lived under a pond at a farm. Oh, that's and creepy. He wanted me to drive to this pond. He said, he says, he'll tell me where to tell you to go, to go see where he lives. You totally should have done that. No, I totally shouldn't have. <laughs> no, he totally should have. Hell no. <laughs> I'm not saying go there and hang out, but how fucked would it have been if he led you right to a pond that you've never been to? Yeah, which is exactly... That would have been terrifying. It's 100% probably what was going to happen, but I'm like, I don't want some kind of ethereal being trying to summon my kid to the bottom of a lake. Well, that's true, too. Like, it was it was wild. And he would talk about him having green skin and blue hair, or blue skin and green hair. I can't remember. But then I'm putting so it together. I'm like, weird. man, if a body was under the water, would it have blue skin and... Maybe mossy green hair. I don't know. That's creepy. But one day he just stopped talking about him. So should I have... Severed the connection. Should I have drove to the lake to see where Juger Bob lives? Probably. But also... Bob. Yeah, shout out Juker Bob. Hope you're just chilling wherever you're at, dog. The bottom of a lake. Yeah, so weird. But as far as Ingrid goes here... uh, First off... Oh, I wish I had going in on another one. I know. I, I wish I had another one. Um. Anyways, yeah. It does make Your, you wonder. Yours is weird. Like her, the fact that it was such a trickster. It reminds me of Drop Dead Fred. You ever watch that show? Yes. That's exactly what I thought of. Yeah, that's a good point. Where he's smearing dog shit all over the carpet. <laughs> Just, <laughs> that's what it made me think of. And it kind of it kind of is that in her case because she said it got her in trouble. Yeah, what a malicious ass. Pumpkin. Although the phrasing that you used was rather concerning that you had to break up with him. Yeah, like sever. Just it's it's and wild. Do it over the phone, like, which is even physically more bizarre. Sever the ties. Yeah, like is weird. That's weird. And it does. It makes you wonder if kids are in. If when we're younger, we are more in tune. To things like you said, beyond the veil, or is it is it just imagination? At what point do you have to shut off writing everything off as a kid's imagination and start like looking deeper and being like, maybe they are on to something here? Yeah, or they're on something. Well, I don't know. He lived I mean, in whichever of, one. He lived in the bottom of a lake. I can't. Whichever one. Uh, I don't know. I'm just thankful that my children have never had the invisible friend thing because. It would make me uncomfortable. It really would. I don't like it because of the way my brain thinks. I wouldn't want the possibility of like, you know, like Steve just said, uh, some type of being connecting with my child. I don't know. It's just an eerie feeling. I don't like it at all. I do think, you know, children are a little more in tune with things. And a lot of it might have to do with just conditioning. The fact that, they know no better. You know what I mean? Like yeah, they It's youthful innocence. Yeah, they don't have a filter for it yet. 
where we get older and we learn and we get programmed to to kind of cancel that stuff out. Then you, then you start a podcast and open yourself back up to it. Yeah, now we're begging for all the smoke. All the smoke. All of it. All right, so uh, I think we're going to go into our next one here. Let's see what it has for us. Let's go. Okay, so I wasn't <laughs> expecting that at all, whatsoever. Well, um, <laughs> we, we got a demon to call in. From hell. S- Simon the demon. <laughs> I mean, at least he said our podcast was sick, so. Yeah, at least, at least we're probably number one podcast in hell. Yeah, at first I didn't know what the fuck was going Dude, on. I, I just heard, the, heard screaming. I heard the screaming and I'm like... What I'm like, here it is. We're in it now. Oh, dude, I thought the exact same thing. I go, what in the fuck is this? <laughs> Playing with a Ouija board. You think it's your grandma? It's not. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> it's so ridiculous. I, I love it. Well, I mean, Simon, I guess we, I guess we appreciate you. Shout you know, out as well to Simon, Simon, Simon the Demon. Shimon. I, uh, I, you're stroking right now. I don't have any idea what the fuck just happened. <laughs> I don't either. I was not prepared for that. My brain was not mentally prepared for what just happened. I I legit thought it was something we were in the shit. I did too. Whenever I started hearing the scream and I'm like, oh my God, what is on the, what is happening right <laughs> now? Is, someone has live streamed a murder oh, dude. onto our phone. But yeah, shout out to Demon or Simon. Simon the Demon and all the demons in hell that listen to our podcast. Yeah, we uh, hope the monster's cold down there, fellas. No, that ain't no shit. It's crispy up here. <laughs> all right, so let's see what the next one has okay, for us. Okay, let's go. Hey, it's uh, it's Jonah. I was just listening to Hollow Phone Two Part Two, and I just wanted to thank you guys so much for putting me on there. I think that's awesome. You guys are literally paranormal rock stars to me. Um, yeah, I definitely will call in more about my life. I have lots to go over and I won't mention the COVID thing. I totally get it. But yeah, thank, thank you so much. You guys are awesome. Bye. You're awesome, bro. Yeah, Jonah, we're going to definitely get you on and uh, have some chats. That's for sure. Yeah, man. Definitely. We are definitely interested in um, all the occultness and like I said before, in a string of synchronicities, we've rounded back to you. Uh, get us some videos of some flying saucers, dog. For sure. Some Tic Tacs. For sure. And you know what's weird? Like, I'm not. I'm not really trying to dive into this conversation, but a I was telling you about how somebody sent me some cool possible research information on COVID, and then. It was so bizarre. Like I went on my little Thanksgiving vacation. There was no service and nothing up there. And I literally in that little short span, I had almost borderline forgot that any of this shit was going on. Like I came back and they were talking about this new, these new variants and all this other fucking crazy stuff. And I was, I literally go, that's still a thing. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm like at. It like, it just like, I don't know, I guess like, I just had removed myself from media so much in that little short time where I'm like, eh, hey, it's life <laughs> back to normal. We're ready to rock. Let's go, boys. Psych. 
Yeah, and then I got the uh, the the rude awakening when I got back to work. I was like, great. At least this isn't over yet. I just want to go back to normal. But anyways, looks like we got about two more here, so we'll see what they have in store. Hey, Stephen, Kyle. Uh, love the show. Not sure if this is a necessarily something that you would want to use, but I'm going to throw it out there anyway, because it's the strangest thing that ever happened to me. Um, and uh, maybe the, my other fellow hollow skites will enjoy it. But about 26 years ago, I was 12 years old. I'm originally from uh, Matt Toon, home of the Mad Gasser. But my mom was a professor at Eastern, and she would drop me off during the summers while she was going over there and doing uh, her prep work for the following year she dropped me off at a property that my dad uh, deer hunted and uh, there were ponds there. So I'd bring my fishing poles, what have you. So I'd, I'd fish in the morning and whenever it got warm and the bite stopped, I would go and look for arrowheads. Uh, shout out to Steven. And there was a certain spot where I had pretty good luck. Um, I found lots of chips and, uh, I uh, found a couple full spearheads, and for most people don't realize that, that what most would call an arrowhead is actually a spearhead. The arrowheads are actually really small. Stephen, you know this. Anyway, um, I had just scoured this area over and over. It had been chisel plowed before the spring planting, and uh, the beans weren't coming up yet. Anyway, um, I had looked and looked and looked, and on my last pass coming through on a spot that I had looked over really well, I looked down, and on top of an oak leaf, right in the center was a perfect arrowhead. Um, I'd never found one so perfect in my life. And it was just so strange to me. And at that moment, I got the feeling that I was being watched. And it was so strange because there, there shouldn't be any reason that a rock is on top of a leaf. That arrowhead should not have been where it was. But uh, there's more to the story actually about a hundred yards from where I found it, there's an Indian burial mound. And years ago, the U of I came in and excavated it. So it's actually more like a donut. It's, it's, it's a concaved center of the mound. Um, and that always, it was always just a surreal feeling whenever I was going in there hunting with my dad, uh, to walk by, it, um, just because, there, we just have so much respect for, you know, the Native American history in the area. Anyway, uh, like I said, I don't, I don't know if you want to use this story, but uh, uh, it's the definitely the strangest thing that ever happened to me. Anyway, love the show, guys. You do awesome. I'm a, I'm a fellow blue collar brother, uh, Kyle. You uh, trim trees probably right away for the company that I work for down in Southern Illinois. Anyway, um, take care guys and, uh, keep up the good work and keep everything too wicked later. Definitely too wicked. Absolutely. And you're right. I probably do trim trees for the same company that you work for. <laughs> and I, I totally feel you 100% on, um, when you're out looking for artifacts and stuff, one uh, particular incident that stands out in my head was I was up at the place where I always look for arrowheads and the corn was up tall, probably eight or nine feet. It was hot, probably August. Wasn't having any luck. And I was finally just kind of walking the rows, <clears throat> um, heading back to my car and I got this feeling like just walk down this row, just walk this row, because I had already I'd already thrown the towel in. I was already just over it. Like I said, it was hot and sweaty, and the corn makes you itchy, and you're just done. So sure enough, I take off down this row, and probably not thirty feet in there, there is a perfect spear point just sitting, like something just led me to it. And I also, also. I'm fully on board with feeling watched at these sites because I get that feeling quite a bit when I'm up there too. I always tell Kyle, I call it the watcher in the woods and it's almost like <clears throat> it doesn't feel uh, malevolent or anything like that. It just, just, just like someone's keeping, keeping tabs, keeping an eye on you, checking in. 
sometimes I'll hear it moving. I don't know if it's deer, if it's squirrels or whatever, but it, it almost sounds like it keeps pace with me as I'm walking. It's, uh, I don't know, it's weird. Kind of gives me the goosebumps a little bit thinking about it. Yeah, but I, I dig the artifact talk. I could talk rocks forever. Yeah, same. Except that I would sell them and make lots of money. That's where Kyle's at. <laughs> yeah. Well, when you... Never mind. I'm not going to go there. <laughs> but anyways, you can make a lot of money. No, some of the super cool ones I would definitely keep because there is a, a cool aspect to it. And then some of them are just rocks to me. But some of them are extraordinary, and that's awesome. Like I've heard a story of a guy nearby who has one insured for a million dollars. That's... Because they thought that it was made of obsidian. Coming to find out, it's made of meteor. So it's literally like one of a kind. Oh. So that's pretty cool. That would be a unique one that you hang on to. That is pretty sick. Although a million dollars is a lot of money. So there's that. Also accurate. And it could legitimately be one of a kind. But I don't know. It, yeah, he makes a good point that there isn't a reason that, that rock should have been on top of a leaf at all. And uh, almost, It's almost like... like something wanted wanted you to, to find, find it. it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And it kind of, I mean, I can't really relate. I don't do a whole lot of arrowhead hunting because I am, I am trash at it. I cannot find anything ever. But I do, on the occasion, get that feeling of being watched in the woods, which a lot of people do. It is eerie. It is. And I've heard of other fellow uh, artifact collectors and hunters that will leave, like, offerings, like uh, loose tobacco, They'll huh. bury it under the ground and just, just kind of like, you know, we're not here to just take. We're going to give back as well. You that's, know? that's that's interesting. <laughs> kind of A little more like, on like a spiritual aspect to it yeah. and then a respect thing. And yeah, like we're, let's keep the peace, you know? Right. You don't, don't sneak up on me in my sleep tonight and <laughs> yeah. fuck with me. <laughs> I don't know. Uh it's weird. And uh, the feeling for me is always, is always significantly worse when you're alone. Like when you're alone, it seems like that watch feeling gets pretty intense at times. Yeah. The wood, the woods are a weird place, man. It is weird. All right. Well, we got one more. So let's see what it looks like a short one. So we'll see what she's got in store for us. Hey guys, uh, this is Dakota from Maryland. I'm just calling in a UFO encounter I had when I was, I think, 14 or 15. I was in um, in my dad's car headed down the highway somewhere in western Maryland. And right above the highway, there was a low-flying, slow, quiet black triangle. Um, I've always been into UFOs and the paranormal, so I pretty much knew exactly what I was looking at. And I tried to take a picture with my iPhone camera. Um, but every time I pointed my camera at the thing, my phone would just go black screen and I'd have to open my phone back up. Uh, I tried to take a video. I tried to use my dad's camera. None of it worked. So I don't know if the U.S. government is just kind of boldly flying their secret military aircrafts over highways and hoping that nobody has a disposable camera to snap a picture with. But it was a really weird kind of situation because there were tons of people on that road. And I know they all saw it because this thing was flying low enough to cast a shadow pretty much. Um, I've got some more intense encounters that I'll call back with, but I figured I'll start with something pretty light. Uh, I love the podcast. Keep it up. Um, yeah, I'll call back soon. All right. So I can tell you right now that the second your voice took over, me and Steve were instantly captivated because I was I was thinking like, oh shit, this dude's looking at a UFO right now as he's calling in because you had that intensity in your voice like this literally is going on or just happened. Yeah, I was I was definitely definitely drawn in. So there's that, and then it was <laughs> ironic that during your voicemail there, I don't know if it was ironic, man. <laughs> you said U.S. government, and then it just went. <laughs> yeah, I hope I hope that the like recording redacted. picked it up. Because something was cutting into your phone call when she started talking that's about the government. That's what it looked like, man. Oh, that's wild. I don't even Yeah, know. and dude, yeah, get at us with some more intense UFO shit. Like, it, that's always fascinating to me. And then, isn't it, I don't want to say proven, but isn't there a lot of talk now that the Black Triangles are more of a military craft? 
Oh, I have no idea. I've been hearing that here of late, <laughs> and then I've also heard that there was a document released or an article written or whatever it was here recently as well that the military came out and said that some some of these craft are military and spiritual craft. What the? What in the hell is a I, spiritual craft? I have no fucking clue, but it made it sound like it was combined, like military tech and spiritual shit. I don't know. It that was weird. Is, like, what is it? What even is a spiritual craft? I don't know. How? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, I, I don't know. I have no idea, but I I can't remember. I even seen the article. I think I was too busy. I think I was at work and I couldn't, I didn't have time to read it. And then of course you lose it and you hate yourself for not screenshotting it or sending it to somebody or whatever, email it to yourself. I mean, I, I think I've seen essentially the same thing. I've seen it. And it just, it didn't once. make any sound and it blocked out all the stars yep. that were above it. So it was, it was between me and the stars and it just moved silently across the sky. I don't I don't know how big it was because I didn't have any field of depth. I was out somewhere where there was essentially very little light pollution. And it just kind of I mean, it just moved on about its way. It was silent and it was weird. I actually saw mine in the same spot. Uh <clears throat> dude sent us the video of the alien in his driveway and his wife oh, was seeing yeah, same same area. Exact yeah. same area. I won't say what town that is to keep his his uh, homestead safe, but yeah, exact same area. It is creepy that it. And if you're still listening, itself. yeah, if you're still listening, we saw we were at the the quote unquote fire department there when we saw it that night. That's and if weird. you're like I said, if you're listening, you'll know what I'm talking about. That is bizarre. Yeah, it. I don't know, and it, it's so weird. Like I was thinking about today how UFO encounters are more and more prevalent and it's almost like more and more people could give a fuck less now. Oh yeah, I agree. It's like it's so weird. Yeah, I feel like if they would really if they were releasing the information they're releasing now 10 years ago, everybody would be losing their shit. Yeah, it's just so bizarre. Like like that National Defense Act that they're trying to pass or they yeah. did pass. Um if you read through that if you go to .gov, whatever, and pick through it at about page 1491, like they're talking about creating an unidentified aerial phenomenon task force. And they talk about trying to um, essentially catch <laughs> catch one of these to, to, to kind of break down the technology of it. Like it's, it's in the bill getting ready to be passed. You like how do you need any more verification than it being in legislature in the United States? Yeah, then there's that, and then you look at it from a little bit different angle. Like I'm kind of viewing it right now as like, okay, well, why are you wanting to chase them now? Yeah, like yeah. are you just seeing that many now that Is there's there a threat issue? coming that we need to know about? <laughs> you know what? Speaking of that, here's a little crazy rant. I'll I'll go on for a minute here since we have a couple minutes. So my brain works in mysterious ways. <laughs> Facts. And the other day I'm kind of sitting around and I'm I get we've kind of like low key had this conversation before where we've always had this like quote unquote debate on gun control, right? And sometimes I wonder, I've wondered to myself, like what if this whole gun grab shit is fake and they want more and more people to have guns because every single time they talk about taking people's firearms away, what ends up happening? People go out and buy shit loads more guns. And then we've had, you know, the, the past two years with the, the cities being burned and everything else. And there, there are record numbers of firearm sales. There's people who didn't even, wouldn't even have contemplated owning a firearm. Now they own a firearm. And I got to thinking to myself, I'm like, you know, let's say because, oh, and I think the thought had popped in my head because you sent me what America said to Russia about invading, uh, 
what was it, Ukraine or whatever, and Putin was like, yeah, in a couple of weeks we're going to have hypersonic missiles, so there's that. Yeah. yeah. And it got me thinking, I'm like, you know what? What better way? Like, you don't want to come out and tell the American public, like, hey, there's a high chance that we are going to be under attack by uh, two of the world's superpowers at once. You need to go out and arm yourselves. That would be chaos. Exactly. Or even even if you want to go way out on a limb here, there may or may not be beings from a different planet on their way here. <laughs> you know? And I'm not saying this is reality at all. This is the way my brain was working one day. And I'm like, what better way? Like, at that point, at least everybody has a... The majority of people have a firearm. Doesn't mean it's a tank, no. But they have means to fight back and make it harder for a force coming in to take us by force. Because you not only have to fight the military at that point, you have to literally fight everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Essentially. So and that's it, that's kind of my thoughts whenever people go on this big, they're coming for our guns rant. Um, if they wanted to, they would. Yeah. So, like, yeah, exactly. That's, and it just, that's where that, that's period the end. Like, they they just would, and they're not. <laughs> so, yeah, it's just weird. Like, and it just it, it's the same thing every single time they go for. It. Every time they go for them, people it just people drive go, sales to the roof, yeah. dude. Because yeah. they were saying over Black Friday alone, there were shitloads of people applying to get guns, and these oh. are new first time gun owners. And I'm like, man, this that, is that's I, so I never, weird. I never thought of it like from that perspective where. They're just low key under the table trying to prep everybody for something shitty. Yeah, and even if it even if it's not like I'm not saying it's in the works, but even if they thought it might happen, like you know what? And I mean, it's better to be safe than sorry. Like I said, all all that legislation putting together these task force and stuff, like it makes there's you a wonder. lot of shit they're not telling us. It makes you wonder. There is a lot of shit they're not telling us, and that in itself. Is terrifying. Yeah, but they're, but in a in a way they're kind of like beating around the bush a little bit. They're just tiptoeing around, yeah. like you oh, know yeah. what? Let's just slowly we're, start testing the waters. We're gonna create a task force just in <laughs> case, right? We get invaded, and yet, not saying we are, but there is a chance that we could. Not saying that we know about it or that it's coming. <laughs> But it's probably coming. And yet, <laughs> here, the only people talking about it are people like you and me. Like, the rest of the world doesn't give a flying fuck. They're like, like this, is, this is, like, we're too focused on this. We don't care that the government is spending our tax dollars and creating secret organizations to hunt down alien spacecraft. That's irrelevant right now, guys. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about it. Right. Do not worry about real life Independence Day. Like, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish I could find, like, go and read that National Defense Act or whatever the f- hell it's called. I started to, but it's way too big of words for me. Go down to page 1491 and you get into some UFO stuff. So, I, I mean, did get there, though. I, if UFOs I aren't real, why are we making legislation about them? It's so freaking bizarre, man. It's, it is. What a time to be alive. I'm telling you, it is it is weird. It is definitely the weirdest that I've ever been through these past two years. And Hollow Sky's here to reap the benefits. I know. I hope we get big as fuck. <laughs> I didn't know what other word to use. No, that's, that's... I tried dodging it, but I couldn't. It was impossible. We've been doing pretty good about not cussing. Yeah, we're trying. We've been toning it way back. Yeah, being a little more respectful. there's a lot of people that get sad when I say the F word. Yeah, I'm still in the camp of I don't necessarily care that much, but I am. I have noticed I'm subconsciously doing it. Same, <laughs> same. We're trying. Yeah. We're trying so to work make with the us. show accessible to everyone. So work with in us. turn, if you would just share the show with everyone you know, that would be great. Yeah, help and us help you. Tell help Elon us. Musk to give us lots of money. I had anybody that follows me on Twitter knows that I have been low-key trying to get Elon Musk to retweet me. 
I mean, that's fair. I don't see why he wouldn't. No, I've been trying. I've been... He keeps talking about, like, building all these rockets and shit, and I'm like, yo, we've already explored space. We need interdimensional travel. You need to just tell him to raise the price of Dogecoin again. Well, so I did. We get I said rich. Well, I said shib to the moon because I own like s- seven million shares that aren't worth anything right now. Oh, that's bullshit. Well, I have Dogecoin. You yeah, need to get that to the moon. If shib goes to the moon, and I sell seven million shares for six bucks. You don't have to sell anything. But I still won't have money. Yeah, I will. We're a team. <laughs> We're <laughs> we are a team. All we right. I be, guess I guess I see we will the logic. Be set. I guess I see the logic. And whoever is cutting Elon Musk's hair, for fuck's sake. Yeah, did you see that? that guy. Like, he looks I like s- the dude from Fifth Element now. Dude, did you see that meme that had him and Bezos next to get next to one another? No. And Bezos has his head shaved, and they're like, at what at, at what monetary value do you just accept that you're a supervillain and start, start just so playing like, the it's role? It's like Lex Luthor and whoever that guy from Fifth Element was. <laughs> yeah. Like it had to have been done on purpose. I tagged it had him. To be. I tagged him, and I'm like, "Do you remember when that soccer team was stuck in that cave, the youth soccer team, and people were trying to figure out how to get them out before they died?" And Elon was like, "I'll build a submersible to go underwater, and we'll take them out one at a time." And everybody's like, "You're dumb. You're stupid." I'm like, "This is the beginning of a supervillain origin. You have a oh, billionaire yeah. philanthropist who's trying to help the world, and everybody's like." No, you're not doing anything right. So he's like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm making an AI army that I'm going to release next year, and then we'll see how dumb I really am. Yeah, I think I think the the meme that I saw it was the picture of Elon with his new haircut next to that villain from Fifth Element, and all it said was, "And so it begins." <laughs> and he he's legit. He's like, yeah, I'm getting ready to a make. AI robots next year and also start planting the first chips into people's Human brains. brains. Yeah. yeah. I saw Sick. some Nostradamus predictions. Hopefully the chip is called that. Two Wicket. Oh, yeah. Now you better trademark that, copyright that shit before Elon steals it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to suggest it to him and be like, that brain chip, can we call it Two Wicket? Because <laughs> <laughs> Zuckerberg would not let me call Facebook Two Wicket. Yeah. Shut that down. Zuckerberg is a robot, though. Yeah, he is probably a creation of Elon Musk. Hmm. New conspiracy. Absolutely. Elon Musk created I love it. Zuckerberg. Hashtag winning. Hashtag too wicked. Too wicked. We have... We went way off the course. Of That's all right. It's what we do. Hell yeah, it is. Um, and it's on what that... what we do. We are wrapping up. Are there any more text messages you want to read? No, I'll have to hunt through them because Happy. I just end up sitting here looking dumb and not making any noises for like a minute straight. That's so, pretty much what I do every yeah. episode. Anyway, so that wraps up Holophone 3.0. Yes, sir. The third one? Yeah, yeah, so keep sending them stories in. I love doing these because you never yeah. know what you're going to get. We had a fucking... Oh, <clears throat> we had an effing demon calling in. Yeah, that was that. I was Sign not ready demon. for that at all. Let's go. And I was, like I said, we're borderline terrified yeah, when I, I heard the screaming. I'm like, I oh, thought, oh, I thought it was oh, a murder. Boy. I thought we were listening to a murder. Like, we are officially part of invest- an investigation now because this is what happened. But not so much. Just the demon. So it's cool. So, yeah. Uh, wrap us up. Check us out on all our social medias. You know the drill. Till next time, stay safe, stay weird, and keep that hollow line blinging. <laughs>